What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another post game here on Mets Central. And the Mets beat the Arizona Diamondbacks 8 to 3 because, of course, they had to make an 8 nothing lead a little bit interesting. It wasn't like they had to make a sweat out too much outside of that one inning. But regardless, the Mets get the job done. Unfortunately, not gaining any ground because the Atlanta Braves just refused to lose. Padres didn't lose. But I guess technically they gained ground on the Diamondbacks tonight, but it's like that team's not losing much either, and it's like you're pretty far from them, so it's kind of, again, it is what it is, but it's important to win these games at the end of the day, so I'm not going to sit here and complain. At some point, you, you got to think the Braves will lose, right? But um, all jokes aside, yeah, the Mets needed this win especially considering the fact that they need desperately to win this series and to start the series off with a win huge step in the right direction before we recap the game leave a like on the video if you enjoyed subscribe if you guys are new especially if you're Met fans and turn on your notifications so you know i upload or go live on the channel and there is a lot to get into with this game because sean Manaya is putting himself in a position to where there needs to be a legitimate conversation about bringing him back. And I am still on the fence personally, considering the fact that it was a one-year deal for a reason with an option, of course. But I'm skeptical still. But I am starting to feel more comfortable with them signing him and bringing him back over Luis Severino based on what we've seen from... From Sean Mania consistently outside of that start in Seattle. I mean, it has been nothing short of brilliance from him. The way that he attacks hitters, I'm trying to understand the disconnect here because why is it that I'm watching Sean Mania go sinker right in the zone, sinker low and inside? I'm watching him throw that sweeper. I'm watching him throw the fastball and just attack hitters. Why is it that nobody else in this rotation is doing that and instead it just... And just the pitching staff in general, it's instead just nibbling the zone or it's instead just lack of command in general. But I'm watching Sean Mania, who had command issues earlier on in the season, starting to be more comfortable. And I don't know if it who said what to him or if this is just him himself being like, yeah, I, I got to just attack these headers and trust my stuff. But right now it is just working for him because, man, he was that four seam tonight look great his sinker tonight look great i mean all of his pitchers honestly did but especially those two in particular and he had an unbelievable outing which we'll get into uh more as we talk about this game in the first inning the mets would go down in order the uh diamondbacks two strikeouts for Manaya right off the rip and then he ends up getting a line out to end the inning a one two three inning there Second inning, Pete Alonso with a solo shot to make it one to nothing. Nice to see him hitting home runs. It sucks that he's still doing it with nobody on base. But again, it, I'm not going to sit here and nitpick too much tonight with Pete Alonso with runners in scoring position struggling because at the end of the day, the Mets won eight to three. It's hard to sit here and complain tonight. Uh, Jesse Winker hits into a pop out. JD Martinez would walk Tyrone Taylor. Hits into a fielder's choice, but an error there ends up keeping the inning alive, which would have been a double play there more likely than not. And Jeff McNeil would end up hitting into a force out, which would, of course, score a run to make it two to nothing. Alvarez would strike out to end the inning. We go to the bottom of the second where outside of a Josh Bell single, a pair of flyouts and a strikeout to end the inning. The top of the third inning, Lindor would get a leadoff double. And in typical Mets way, they don't do anything with said leadoff double. Vientos would strike out. Nima would ground out. Alonso flies out. We go to the bottom of the third where Manaya, this was his best inning where he was just going full attack. Got, he got himself uh, three strikeouts that inning. Got Newman out on three pitches too there. I, again, just attacking with the sinker. Just going at hitters with the sinker. Even throwing the sweeper in a bit in these pitch mixes. But uh, it was mostly the sinker in that inning and it worked and it got... Uh, got him through to get three strikeouts there. We go to the top of the fourth inning where the Mets would go down in order. Bottom of the fourth inning uh, could have been a one, two, three inning, but a catcher's interference. Thankfully, Alvarez ended up being okay there, which McNeil got a double. And after Alvarez did have a frustrating at bat, he gets himself an RBI single, which I know Eric Chavez must have been going berserk and being like, oh, I told you so with hitting the other way with, about Alvarez, which... I, uh, uh, one hit's not going to change my mind, but it, hey, it worked right then and there. So it made the Mets have a three to nothing lead. So I'll take it. Lindor would then get a single. Vientos then with a single. 
Nimmo with a single and ended up being four to nothing at that point after Vientos' single. So they end up getting, what was it, five consecutive singles or four consecutive singles there? So, or uh, no, five consecutive hits with four consecutive singles in there. I'll take it. Pete Alonso, though, strikes out. Winker hits a sacrifice fly, five to nothing. Martinez then with a single. And then Jordan Montgomery comes in relief and hits Tyrone Taylor. I think it was on the first pitch, too, which is just ridiculous. I don't know how the ump missed that it, he was clearly hit there, but regardless, it is what it is. Six to nothing. Jeff McNeil then walks seven to nothing. Alvarez gets uh gets a RBI or gets on base, I should say, because of an error. Eight to nothing. A run comes in. Uh, and then Lindor strikes out. We go to the bottom of the fifth where a pair of strikeouts was picked up by Manaya. And then Newman lines out to end the inning. We go to the sixth inning. Vientos flies out. Nimmo with a double. A wild pitch would move in the third, but unfortunately the Mets would not capitalize as Alonzo strikes out. Bader comes in the pinch hit and he lines out. We go to the sixth inning where again Manaya two strikeouts had a pop out in there, but he looked dominant the seventh inning. The Mets go down in order. And they gave Manaya the seventh to start, which I was completely content with. Why not? You're up eight to nothing. You got to give it a shot. And then Lourdes Gurriel would hit a home run, unfortunately, to make it eight to one. Bell hit a single. I personally would have pulled him there, but Mendoza ended up, you know, rocking it out because you're still up eight to one. Why not? So I guess it's not the end all be all there. Grichik would hit into a pop out. Suarez strikes out. I'm like, all right, he's going to get out of this inning. And then Corbin Carroll hits that home run to make it eight to three. And that brings Reed Garrett in. And I'm, I am i got to say, I've seen enough of Reed Garrett. Um, I, I'm done with him at this point. This is just... He allows two singles there. Gets folded like an accordion on the mound or a pretzel, whatever. Gets into a knot like a pretzel, whatever you want to say, on uh, the first one from Newman. He's not getting low leverage guys out of... He didn't, couldn't get the number eight and nine hitters out. Got the number one hitter out, but let's be honest. Geraldo Perdomo's not a true leadoff guy. Uh, Reed Garrett, I've seen enough of. I, I just have, and he needs to be he needs to be sent back down to AAA, and they need to get, whether it's Alex Young back up or somebody in AAA, they need to get up because I've seen enough of Reed Garrett to know that this is just, it is what it is, and what we saw in that one to two months, it was fun, it was great, it was Cool to, you know, just go berserk about it. But at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. It, it, what's it, what's behind is behind. Like, it's, they need to let it go. Um, But unfortunately, they probably won't. Top of the eighth inning, two ground outs in a row. And then Vientos and Nimmo would both get singles. And then Alonso would hit into a ground out, unfortunately, as the Mets could have extended their lead, but didn't there. Maton comes in, which I found interesting. McCarthy would get a double. Then he ends up getting uh, two outs there. Danny Young would come up to uh, face Jock Peterson. And wow, that pitch that he struck him out on was just absolutely disgusting. Just vile, that uh, sweeper, which uh, did Jock Peterson probably should have laid off of. But the movement on that was looked pretty nice to where I could see why a bit... Uh, why he swung at it, but regardless, we go to the ninth inning where Bader would line out. Martinez with a single, Taylor with a double, and unfortunately, two ground outs there. The Mets, again, can't extend their lead. Ottavino comes in, and I said right then and there, Diaz might as well take his hoodie off because I did not trust Ottavino to get through uh, three outs as per usual, but he ends up doing it. He ends up doing it, and it is what it is. Uh, I'm not complaining here at all. Gets a strikeout, gets a pop out, line out, and that ends the ball game. And the Mets end up grabbing the win. They had uh, 13 hits in this win. The offense, 4 for 16 with runners in scoring position, which on paper does not really sound the greatest. But at the end of the day, they did have a lot of guys that contributed, which is a positive sign considering you have not seen this from Brandon Nimmo having a three-hit night in quite a while. We have not seen uh, guys like Alvarez get some big hits in outside of the Orioles' walk-off. But outside of that, you know, it's been quite a bit since he's Really got a big hit. Jeff McNeil got a big hit in this game. J.D. Martinez having a two for four night, which is really nice to see. So it was good to see the offense actually contribute throughout and fill out the box score outside of Jesse Winker, who did not contribute a hit, and then Bader as well when he came in the pitch hit. But yeah, outside of that, I mean, the offense, fine. Like, it, it, they did a fine job. I know when you look at eight runs, you think, oh, they did outstanding, but... 
I would say they did a fine job because to me, you know, if they were capitalizing more, like they could have pounced more on uh, this Diamondback squad. But again, it is what it is. It's hard to complain when they scored eight runs and won the game to begin with. And then in terms of the pitching, like I mentioned, Sean Mania, 11 strikeouts for him, didn't allow a single walk, three earned runs. He's earning himself quite a payday this offseason. I can tell you that right now. I don't know if the Mets are going to be the team that pays him. Right now, I would not mind it if he's going to be putting up outings like this, especially considering he's a guy that we envision to be like a four starter. Like, if he's your number four guy, I'm not complaining. And if Steve Cohen's willing to throw the... uh throw the bag at Sean Mania to have him be the four starter on top of acquiring, of course, some top end talent to pair with guys like Sanga. And then of course, Sprout who will come through the system. I don't mind that, but I don't want them to also overpay. But again, that's off season discussion there, but Sean Mania, he has just looked brilliant as of lately, only allowed four hits as well. I love what we got from him tonight. Of course, Reed Garrett, not great. Maton looked fine. Danny Young, great in his, uh, the one battery face, and then Adam Adovino actually looked fine in his inning of work. So, yeah, the Mets, unfortunately, in the same spot they've been in the past few days, though, where they win a game and don't gain ground, but they're still staying afloat. So we'll see what happens as we get further down the stretch here, of course. Um, they'll be back at it again tomorrow. Back at it again tomorrow against the same Diamondbacks team. I believe it is... Um, Severino on the bump tomorrow. Yeah, against Eduardo Rodriguez. So we'll be back here, of course, to cover it. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. Turn on your notifications so you know I upload or go live next. And I'll see you guys in the next one.